Okay, we're in Luke 11, and last week we took a little break from Luke 11. We talked about knowing the will of God, but we want to get back into it, back into Luke 11 today, and just remind you, last time, two weeks ago, we were looking at the Pharisees, the Pushim, and we looked at them from verses 39 to 44 in Luke 11. We saw that they were hypocrites. In verse 39, we saw Yeshua describe them as cups and platters that were clean on the outside, but dirty on the inside. They looked good on the outside. They washed their hands. Okay, They did the the ceremonial hand washing. They gave their tithes, their money, their food to, to help the community, to help Uh, others. They received respect from people in the community. But again, they were only doing things on the outside to be seen. On the inside, they were still unclean. And so he says about them in verse 39 that your inward part inside is full of ravening and wickedness. And in verse 44, he describes them as graves which appear not. Basically, he says you are dead people. You're like dead people. Again, their need was a clean and pure heart. Something that only God could give them through faith in Yeshua. But Yeshua wasn't done yet. (laughs) He had just gotten done uh, condemning the Pharisees, roasting them. And now it's time for the lawyers, or scribes. Lawyers or scribes, we can use these two words interchangeably. And so before we talk about the lawyers and what Yeshua said about the lawyers, we need to differentiate between the two groups. Okay? Lawyers and Pharisees are not exactly the same. What is the main distinction between a lawyer and a Pharisee? I would say the main thing is a Pharisee was concerned about his behavior. He was concerned with what he did and what people saw him do. Whereas a lawyer, a scribe, was more concerned in what he was able to teach other people. Not necessarily focused on how people saw him live out his life, but what he was able to teach other people. So Pharisees is concerned with how they look, in what they do in front of other people, the lawyer is more concerned about how they can teach other people the law according to Jewish tradition. And there was some level of tension between these two groups. Okay, We often read scribes and Pharisees together, and we may think they were good, good buddies, good friends. Uh, but like with many religious sects and denominations, there's often tension between the groups. And between uh, lawyers and Pharisees, I believe there was at least some level of tension. And as Yeshua was condemning the Pharisees, the lawyers may have been kind of sitting off to the side and maybe they had a little smile on their face and they said, yeah, Yeshua, you you get those Pharisees, they they don't know what they're doing. But I think that, that smile quickly faded when he realized that he's talking about them as well and that their turn was coming. And so we see their realization in verse 45. Because it says in verse 45, Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us also. You also reproach us by what you're saying. And I like the, in in the Hebrew New Testament, the the Deitlich translation here is, uh, Techaref gamutanu. We have the word cherpa to disgrace, shame. And that really captures what what Yeshua is trying to say here, or what what they were saying here, their idea. They were saying, basically, Yeshua, by saying what you said about the Pharisees, you also are insulting us. You're, You're disgracing us as well. Are we like the Pharisees? Are we hypocrites like these Pharisees that we maybe thought we were better than them? It's an interesting way to respond to Yeshua's criticism because they had 
been there. They heard how Yeshua criticized the Pharisees, and this is how they decided to respond to that criticism. And what it does, it reveals the true heart of these lawyers in response to this uh, condemnation by Yeshua. They could have said, you're right, Yeshua, it's, you got us, you, we need to change, help us to change. But obviously, that was not their response. They were insulted, offended. They wanted to defend themselves. Jeremiah, the prophet, spoke about such a reaction to criticism from the word of God. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10. Jeremiah 6, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, and here it says, the word of the Lord, the word of God is unto them. It's not just a, it's not a correction or a way to help them, but because of how they view the word of God, it says it's a reproach to them. And here's our word again, cherpa, disgrace. It's a reproach. They have no delight in it. People hear criticism from the word of God. They can respond with an open heart, ready to listen and change. Or they simply see it as something offensive. It causes uh, disgrace, but something that's not going to change them. So rather than responding to this, so what Yeshua said and said, Yeshua, we're ready to listen and change. They were insulted, and so uh, they felt insulted by what he said. And so because of that response, Yeshua was very compassionate. In verse 46, he says, you're right, guys, I'm sorry for offending you. Let's forget the whole thing, go grab a falafel together. That's absolutely not what Yeshua said to these offended lawyers. Instead, he says, woe unto you also, ye lawyers. What I was saying about Pharisees was bad, but I also have some things to say about you as well. And like I said last time, in relation to this word woe, when you use the word woe with the Pharisees, oi, I guess, in Hebrew, uh, this is an expression of grief. When we see the word woe, this is an expression of grief. And I said last time that about 50%, half of the time that we see the word woe, that Yeshua using the word woe in the, in the Gospels, it's in reference to the, the, the Pharisees and the lawyers. Okay? So of all the woe, the grief that was expressed by Yeshua through this word woe in the Gospels, half the time it was caused by the behavior of the Pharisees and the lawyers, specifically their hypocrisy. Hypocrisy greatly grieves our Savior. And uh, in this instance, we see that as well. So last time we looked at the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And in verse 46, now we see the hypocrisy of the lawyers. The lawyers wanted to, as I said, to teach others. Their focus was on teaching. Yet they didn't want to do what they taught. They wanted to teach others, but they weren't often found doing the things that they taught. They didn't, as we say in English, they didn't practice what they preached. And so he says about them in verse 46, For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Pastor right on time. Yeah, he is a little late. <laughs> okay. Um, he laid men with burdens, grievous to be born. And Yeshua, what was Yeshua talking about? What's he talking about? Uh, Lading men with burdens, grievous to be born. Yeshua was using an image here that was very familiar to his audience. And that's the picture I want to direct you to um, here on the screen. Uh, this is a man in Jesus' day would call him a porter, okay? And what was the job of the porter? Typically, he was a very poor man. Porter, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. What, uh, 
it just was the name in English that we used for him. Yeah. Um, and so the porter was a man, a poor man, one of the poorest men in town. You would find him, and you would hire him to to carry your produce from from outside of the the marketplace or outside of the city gate and haul it into the marketplace. Okay, because the the donkeys with the carts, they weren't always allowed to come right into the marketplace area. So sometimes you would have to find a, a poor soul like this, a porter, load up everything that was in the cart that was already that was being carried by a horse by, or a donkey and a cart and put it on a man's back and force him to, to carry it then from whatever distance uh, outside of the gate, outside of the marketplace and carry it to his his place in the market to sell the produce. These were heavy loads. As you can see in this picture, this was not something easy. He would trudge along, probably taking some breaks along the way. Uh, and so we see the, the life of the porter. So meanwhile, we have this image of him carrying this heavy load. And the boss, the man who hired him, He's telling him where to go. He's giving him directions where to carry it. But he himself is not actually helping the porter with the, with the actual carrying of the produce. Okay, he was just simply telling him what to do. And Yeshua was using this illustration. He knew that the people he was talking to were familiar with the, with the job of the porter. And so he was using this as an illustration of the lawyer's saying that this is how they were treating the common Jew. They were like the bosses telling these porters where to go and how to carry this heavy burden. But they themselves weren't actually helping to carry it. And obviously, what is the burden? It's not simple produce. Rather, the burden that the lawyers put on the backs of the Jews was all the additional rules, all the additional teachings that they imposed, that they forced on the Jews to obey. You know, the Torah told them what they should do as good Jews, but the lawyers would then add all these other extra, extra rules, extra fence laws, and it would just increase their burden in life. So if the Torah said not to see their boil kid in his mother's milk, the lawyer will burden you even more by saying, don't even mix meat and dairy together. If the Torah says not to conduct any business on Shabbat, don't do any business, the lawyer will increase your burden and say, don't even touch, physically touch money on Shabbat. If the Torah says to pray unto the Lord your God, they would make even this a burden by saying, you need to pray these exact words. You need to pray this many times per day. Everything was just adding burden on top of what they really needed to do according to God's word. So these fence laws, these they thought it was protecting the people, giving these laws so they wouldn't get close to breaking the actual law. But all it really did was what Yeshua described here it laid men with burdens grievous to be born. And the hypocrisy of these lawyers was that they wanted other Jews to obey what they were teaching, to carry these burdens, but they themselves didn't do it. So Yeshua says, Ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. The lawyers were asking the common Jew to carry this heavy burden on his shoulders, but they themselves didn't even want to touch the burden with one of their fingers. And we can see the fault of these lawyers and their hypocrisy. We can see it in modern day Judaism as well. But can I also say that sometimes we see it even in the realm of Christianity? How many teachers, pastors are out there preaching but not practicing what they preach? How many Christians will be very quick to judge others for, for how they're, they're living, but then they themselves are not living to the same standard? 
How many theologians know the scriptures very well, at least up here in their head, but fail to live according to its truth? So to these men and women, Yeshua says, woe unto you also. These type of people, this type of behavior grieves our Savior. They cause him to say, woe. Our view as born-again believers must be different. First, we shouldn't make the word of God a a burden, a grievous thing to bear. Anything we preach to someone should be based only on the word of God. And we should be willing to do anything that we preach to others to do as well. Secondly, secondly, If there truly is a burden to bear, our attitude must be different than the lawyer. We must be ready to share in the burdens with our brothers and sisters. Not to let a poor brother or sister be like this porter carrying the load by himself. We need to alleviate one another's burdens. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Galatians 6, verse 2. That's, That's our commandment. Galatians 6, 2, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6, 2, as a congregation, we need to bear one another's burdens. When we see someone struggling in our congregation, we aren't to add to his burden by simply judging him for his wrong behavior. Rather, we should do what is needed to alleviate his burden, to help when help is needed. Thirdly, finally, regarding our sin, we must realize that Yeshua is the only one strong enough to carry that specific burden, the burden of sin. The lawyers, they were putting all the burden on the shoulders of the people, including the burden of their sin. They provided no relief to the sinner heavy laden with sin. But Yeshua takes the burden off completely off our shoulders. And it's with that idea of this porter with the heavy load on his back that Yeshua also said in Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28. When he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All you that are walking around with the heavy load of sin on your back, come to me and I will ease that heavy load. And when I, when I think of this, I can't help but think of Pilgrim's Progress. Many of you have probably read Pilgrim's Progress and think of Christian in the beginning, where he has that heavy load on his back, representing the burden of sin. And it's not until he comes to faith that that load, that burden, falls off his back. The lawyers, they just piled it on. They just piled the weight on the back of sinners until it was too grievous to bear. But Yeshua removes that burden of sin, and he gives rest to the sinner through faith in him. It was on the cross that Yeshua bore the sins of the world. He bore it on his shoulders, so that we don't have to. The sinner does not have to. Daisy's already convicted. (laughs) Sinner doesn't have to bear the burden on his shoulders because Yeshua has already taken on himself on the cross. So Yeshua rebuked the lawyers for their hypocrisy and for the burden that they put on the backs of the of the common Jew. And he also warned them in verses 47 to 52. Not only did the lawyers not want to practice what they preached. But according to verses 47 to 49, they also didn't want to listen to other people who tried to teach them. They didn't, want to, they didn't want to listen specifically to the prophets that God sent to teach the children of Israel. They loved to teach, but they hated to be taught. They hated the message, really, of the prophets, it's something that their fathers before them Hated as well. And that's what Yeshua points out here. Verses 47 to 49 says, Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. 
Surely you bear witness that you allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. So here we see the rejection of the message of the prophets, past, present, and future. Their fathers didn't listen to the prophets of the past. Currently, these lawyers were not listening to the prophet before them. He was not listening. They were not listening to Yeshua, who was right there. And even predicted that even after his death, you would reject the message of, of my apostles, my prophets. In verse 49. Yeshua said to them that you build the sepulchers of the prophets and your fathers killed them. Here's hypocrisy shown very vividly. Repeatedly, the children of Israel rejected the messengers. They killed God's prophets. In verse 48, when it says here that Yeshua said to them, you allow the deeds of your fathers... We have allow in the English translation. It really means, though, to approve. It means you approved of what they did. He says, you guys are no different than your fathers. You, if you were basically saying, if you were in your father's place when they were alive, you would have done the same thing to the prophets. You would have rejected their teaching. Sure, right now you're, you're putting an outward appearance. You're making their tombs very nice and clean. But your hypocrisy is that you don't like the message that they preached. You're just putting on a show. Inside, they rejected the message of the prophets. So again, he says, woe unto you. We can say again, woe unto you. They are hypocrites. To reject the message of the prophets while acting like they actually cared about the, the prophets. He says, you'll be just like them. You will also kill God's messengers there in verse 49. And we see that come to pass as we get into the New Testament. <clears throat> so these lawyers are guilty. They were guilty of, of really murdering God's prophets. And Yeshua says this by saying, you're guilty of the blood of the prophets. Verses 50 and 51. That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. Okay? So the prophets were killed in the past, but he says it's required of this generation. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zacharias. Blood of Abel was book of Genesis. Zacharias was in Second Chronicles. So we have the entire Tanakh from from beginning to end of Tanakh, of the Old Testament. This was, this was the theme. God sent his messengers. And they rejected God's way, God's message. It's a repeated pattern. What happened with Cain and Abel? Simply, Cain refused to listen to God's, God's way of doing things, and God's message, really. Instead of repenting and doing what his brother Abel was doing, he killed Abel. The killing of Zacharias is shown in 2 Chronicles 24. And it's the same problem. <coughs> we're not going to go there, but we see that what happened, God, they were misbehaving. God sent prophet. They rejected the message. And then they killed the prophet. It's in 2 Chronicles 24, verses 17 to 22. So this is the pattern. Israel sinned. God sent prophets to teach them. They refused to listen to the prophets. And they killed, finally then, they killed the prophets. And that's actually how the very last chapter of 2 Chronicles ends in Chapter 36, verses 15 and 16, this attitude of God sent them messengers, and they rejected the message. And these lawyers, and all who remain in unbelief like them, 
die with the guilt of the blood of all the prophets. Why? Why are they guilty of the blood of the prophets? It's because by killing and rejecting the prophets, they've rejected the message of the prophets, <coughs> which was pointing them to the Savior. By rejecting the prophets, they were essentially rejecting the prophecies of the Messiah. So the blood of all the prophets shall be required of this generation. And in verse 52, we see one final problem with these lawyers. Verse 52. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. Not only did the lawyers reject the prophets and the truth, but they prevented others from believing as well. They taught them things that were not in the scriptures that would lead them to salvation. And by doing so, they essentially took the key away. There was a locked door leading to eternal life through the word of God. And by taking the focus off the word of God, they had essentially taken the key of knowledge away. Key of knowledge, the word of God. Not their interpretations, but the word of God itself. It's the key of knowledge. This is what they had. This is what the lawyers had. And by replacing this true key, the true word of God with their interpretations, they basically threw the key away. <coughs> now they couldn't unlock the door of truth for themselves, and they couldn't do it for others. They had the responsibility, the ability to teach the people, but they threw it away by focusing on other things other than the Word of God created heavy burdens for the people. I think their hypocrisy hindered a lot of people as well. They heard them teaching things, but they didn't see them doing the things that they taught. A lesson for us as well. Hypocrisy kept me away from Christianity for a long time. Seeing Christians preach one thing, but doing something else. How do these lawyers respond? <coughs> Excuse me. It's not Corona. I have allergies, but. <laughs> My allergies will not go away. <coughs> okay. These lawyers, how do they respond? <coughs> Verses 53 and 54. As he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Here we see the response of a hardened heart. They could have responded with conviction, with a tender heart. Instead, they wanted to get back at Yeshua. Their hypocrisy. He's trying to teach them at first they must change what's inside. But their hypocrisy simply grieved Yeshua. Woe unto you, hypocrites. Let us learn from these lawyers. Let us not only teach the word of God, but let us also obey it. Let us practice what we preach. Let's not only value the word of God, but let's put it into practice. Also, God's given us the key of knowledge, the word of God. What are we doing with that key? Are we using it to open up doors for others? 
or is our hypocrisy preventing others from entering in? Let us not be like the Pharisees and lawyers. <coughs> Excuse me. But let us be free of hypocrisy, practicing what we preach. Let's pray.